know, the thing that's interesting is that, um, you know, people initially going, oh my God, this is going to like decimate geo. I don't think so. I think they're going to find how the symbiotic relationship where they both have a place in the market. Um, there's such a huge demand for capacity. It's massive. And geo operators can provide tons of just, you know, especially downlink capacity and at a pretty good price. And they're getting better and better at that with the HTS satellites and things of that nature. Um, whereas what the Leo operator is doing is they're providing very low latency servers. And no matter what they say, yeah, we're bringing lots of capacity, but we're distributed over a huge area. And um, which means that on the you know, bits per square kilometer, you know, or megahertz per square kilometer, whatever you want to call it, the, um, the density is probably not so much different than a geo. And, um, and maybe even less. So there's always the opportunity for uh, large you know, data transfers and things going forward, broadcast, things of that nature, streaming. All those things can be done very effectively through the geo network. And in the LEO network, um, with proper ground infrastructure, you can now build integrated terminals, integrated systems, so you can operate as a combined system. So I can have a system that, from a customer's viewpoint, he has a connection, but I might be using both, systems, both LEO and GEO. And the system's routing the data from the appropriate source in the most efficient path. Not much different than we do it terrestrially.